Hello, everyone. Welcome back to, with, uh, with uh, Becker Vineyards for another fantastic virtual tasting tonight. My name is Rebecca Nelson. Uh, tonight, we are trying the 2014 Muscat Shinnin. So hopefully you've got that in your glass and you've been swirling it nicely and practicing. Um, we uh, wanted to add a little touch of sweetness to your week. So for the second time only in this, in this whole series, we, we are offering you a white wine with just a little bit of sweetness to it. Uh, I hope those of you who aren't sweet wine drinkers opted to try this one. The last time we got a lot of people uh, commenting that they are really glad they did try it because it wasn't something they would have normally tried. And that's kind of what we're, what we're hoping for, to get everybody to try all the wines. And that's why we've been doing these this whole time. We're really excited for everybody to join us tonight. We have once again with us, Dr. Richard Becker, our owner. We have our winemaker, John Leahy. And we also have our assistant winemaker and enologist, Rachel Fanning with us this evening. I wanna remind everybody to share this feed uh, on your own Facebook page. And I hope everybody enjoys the tasting tonight. Cheers, you guys. Cheers, Rebecca. Thank you for yet another wonderful introduction. So tell us about that nice red sweater you're wearing. I <laughs> borrowed this from Rachel two and a half years ago. <laughs> and she hasn't come to collect it yet. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, so Rachel, welcome back. How was your Monday? Sorry, I didn't hear you. I said, how was your Monday? <laughs> you know, it's good to have a Monday so you can get it out of the way. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So um, I would like us to uh, swirl, sniff, and taste this and cheers everybody for the beginning of the week. And then we're going to go and talk to Dr. Becker about the various vineyards that this gra these grapes came from. Thank you, John. I, uh, you know, for, for weeks in our virtual tasting, <clears throat> we've been uh, saluting and, and shouting out to New York for the way they've uh, battled the, the pandemic and the uh, sequestration they've had to, to undergo. And now they're, they're free. And, and this week in San Antonio, we're starting to put a 250 bed hospital tents inside the Joe and Harry Friedman Coliseum in preparation for the terrible outbreak that's we think may be coming here. So um, now it's our turn to say, this is the really the truest time for us to be uh, as separate and masked and separated uh, as we can be. And also to have a light moment to think about wine. And that's, uh, uh, so we don't have to go out on, on, a, on a balcony in New York. We could just, uh, Stay home in San Antonio. Well, I, I, uh, I'll, I'll stay home here in Fredericksburg, but <laughs> I kind of miss the balconies of New York. <laughs> <laughs> so, Doc, um, the Martin Vineyard. So that's a, a vineyard that we've used for a few years. Uh, it's been a few years since we've we've received fruit from there. But um, can you give us a little history on when you all first started with the Martin Vineyard? I got, you know, it, it, it must have been planted. Um, in the late 80s, I'm guessing, early mm -hmm. 90s, I'm not sure exactly. Uh, one of the oldest uh, vineyards in Texas, uh, some of the most mature uh, uh, Shannon Blanc in, in the state. And I know, I remember going up there and looking at it a few times with Bobby Cox, who was the manager. Mm -hmm. And uh, the fruit from that vineyard has been, has been at times, just with, uh, without, uh, without a, uh, any competition. And uh, so it, it, it's fun to have, have some now uh, blended with the Muscat and Lily. I, I, I agree. I, this wine is kind of fun. Um, the other vineyard that is part of this is the uh, uh, Don Hills place. Uh, he and his son manage. And, and Rachel, you, you know the hills fairly well. So can you take us through that, that vineyard a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. And I, you know, I have to be honest, I haven't been out there in years. I'm not sure what all they're growing these days, but um, from what I can remember, they stick to a lot of the Bordeaux varietals. Mm -hmm. um, of course, the uh, um, Muscat, uh, Cabernet Sauvignon, we've gotten from them before. I believe we maybe possibly got a little Merlot way back a long time ago. Um, but yeah, they're a great family, been around a long time. Um, good farmers, you know, gotten the, the vineyard game and here we are together. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, you know, I always enjoyed going up there, especially um, between Don and Chase, uh, you know, and, and giving Chase all sorts of grief for playing. He's addicted to golf. So, um, you know, he and Daryl, our cellar master, are both cut from the same cloth in that respect. Uh, not that we have doctors who like playing golf. That would be something amazing, wouldn't it? <laughs> so... Bad golf. Yeah, bad <laughs> golf. <laughs> Well, okay, so let's get some impressions here. We're, we're getting, uh, we're finally getting some folks in here. 
uh, our regulars are joining us. So hello to everyone, Gary and, and Angela and Trish, uh, certainly um, folks here from Fredericksburg as well. Um, they, you know, we've gotten a, a, a few wonderful sign-ons here. Uh, the Drynans are back. So they were the ones that we celebrated, uh, Rachel, their 60th on, um, on Friday. Yeah, yeah. So it's good to see old, old familiar friends back again. So what are your impressions? We'll start with you, Rachel, and then Doc, we're gonna, we're gonna dive into this wine pretty hard, I think. Sure, absolutely. So I actually couldn't decide which glass would be best. So I'm going with my unoaked Chardonnay mm -hmm. and my standard Viognier glass. Mm -hmm. um, so I get to pick and choose throughout the evening. Yeah, um, I, sorry, oh, you too? Oh, I have to say, I just got the Syrah glass, so good, good oh, choice. I didn't think no, it's no. Wrong. Yeah. So, um, we were talking just before we went live, of course, about Chenin Blanc and um, how much we love Chenin Blanc. And I think it was such an underrated, great uh, varietal that not everybody not keeps on their, you know, their, their back burner or something to drink all the time. And I absolutely love Chenin Blanc. And um, so this is nice, isn't it? This is fine. It's a little off dry, I guess, 22 and a half percent residual. So that Graham, falls. Two and, and a half, two and a half percent residual, 22 grams. 25? Yeah, you said two and a half percent, or you said 22 and a half percent. 22 and a half percent, that would be a lot. That would be way off dry. Way. Yeah, two and a half percent. Um, you know, and I like, it's starting to show a little bit of its age. It's 2014, so it's, uh, we bottled it in 2016, so it's been aging in bottle for pushing six years now. Um, and I, I like the way it's showing a little bit of its age. It's got that, that nuttiness and almond character that's coming out on the nose and the palate. Yeah, it's uh, it it is coming out, Doc. So um, we're going to put Dr. Becker in his his uncomfortable zone. Uh, <laughs> we're going to make him talk. No. Um, so, Doc, what are, what are your impressions of the wine? You know, what it's interesting for me. Uh, <clears throat> these are two very interesting grapes. Um, both are made dry, sweet, or uh, as a, uh, a, a a sparkling wine. Both both Chenin and Muscat. Um, both uh, are capable of uh, achieving a lot of age. Both have very complex flavors. Muscat is probably named for uh, the musky, aromatic sort of hair pheromone-like uh, 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 es essence that that comes from uh, deer and other animals, uh, and um, it has uh, uh, co complex uh, uh, aromas from a compound called linalool, which is present in, in mint and citrus and cinnamon. Mm -hmm. And uh, Chenin Blanc is, uh, uh, you know, planted, as we were talking before we started, planted by Charles de Bald at 845 on the left bank of the Loire, uh, described by Rabelais in 1500 as the great white wine of Anjou, mm -hmm. uh, described by Jacis Robinson as the white grape that rifles the German Riesling because of its complex flavor. So both of these are very, very complex uh, 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 aromatic and taste uh, wines, and they they go together. They're, you know, the famous uh, Baume de Venise, which is made from Muscat, is a is a sweet form of that of that wine, which lasts for many decades. Uh, and that's that's the first thing that I think about when I smell this and taste it is it has some Baume de Venise. Uh, there's a great line, John, as you were thinking from uh, Robert Frost, uh, which goes, "Was it Musk from hidden grapevine springs downhill at dusk?" Uh, I, that is, so, I, um, I, I want one of my favorite quotes is by Frank Sinatra, who said that uh, alcohol may be man's uh, worst enemy, but the Bible says love your enemy. So <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> um, you know, back to that muskiness in here. And, and that's actually one of the things I enjoy about this. Um, I agree. Yeah. So this is a for, for those of you at home, this is a 2014 vintage. Yes, it is sweet. It is off dry. It's, it's, as Rachel mentioned before, it's 22 grams per liter of residual sugar. That translates to 2.2% sugar um, in, in the wine. That, uh, that is, that's not super sweet, like our port would be uh, 12 to 14% residual sugar, and this is only two. But that, that RS aside, it, it is not overly sweet. There are some folks who've commented a little too sweet for them. I get it, you have a dry palate. But this wine I like because of the age to show that a white wine can indeed age very well. Now, 2014 white wine, most people would pass that up thinking, why is it here? 
you know, what, what, what's wrong with it. It's not, it is, it is a vintage white wine. And I, I'm very much enjoying the orange essence in here and a little bit of apricot I'm getting yeah, out of this. Um, you know, and then that deeper muskiness uh, is really, really nice. Right. So Rachel, do you have, you have the percentages in front of you? And I, I kind of, I, I threw together a little bit, but I think you've got the actual tech sheet in front of you, yes? I do, one moment. Okay. I, I, um, I threw together a, a basic breakdown on there and I just wanna go through that for everybody, if you wouldn't mind. Are you ready? Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, so we have about 78% Muscat, 20% or yeah, 20% Chenin Blanc, and it's got about two and a half percent um, Viognier. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, the Viognier is where the yeah, it's where where the where the sweetness is coming from. So it, this is a um, uh, a wine we put together for the tasting room uh, for people to to have a wine that's off dry but it is then incredibly food friendly, something that you can drink as an aperitif or enjoy it with some food. Um, and that's, that's one of the things. The other thing I like, you know, Dr. Becker was grilling me before we went on air. He's like, so how much, uh, how, many, how many barrels did this stay in? I, you know, I did this see barrel age? And I, don't, I really honest to God wanted to say, 100% brand new French oak. <laughs> 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 you, get, you, you, you said that regularly. <laughs> well, yeah, know, right? <laughs> unfortunately, it, it'll make me a liar. But it did seem <laughs> like talk, but it was uh, almost all neutral, uh, so neutral uh -huh. barrels. But uh, that we we did manage to to age this in, which uh, really actually is has turned out very nicely. Um, mm -hmm. I'm kind of liking the notes. So I want to get back to the Martin Vineyard because that was a vineyard that I actually enjoyed dealing with. Um, it. It has some uh, some very old vines up there in West Texas, and the the Bingham family. Um, when we were buying from them, the Bingham family was doing the actual vineyard uh, day to day vineyard work up there and managing. A cliff has got a uh, a really nice eye for detail on there. Um, the the age of those vines is incredible to see those gnarled vines uh, when you get up there, and they don't produce a lot. They never the, you know since we'd been buying from them they they were not producing more than a couple of tons per acre, if, if that. I mean, so we, we got this incredible concentration on there. And I think we often overlook the, the sublime qualities of white wine in favor of red. Well, um, and I would like to touch on that for just a minute. You mentioned that people were commenting that this is a little a tad sweet. And I would say, I would agree for me to just sit and drink and enjoy on its own. But as you said, this is one of those that Maybe it, it's not an everyday wine for the drier palates, but um, it has a place, and I definitely think it has a place for food. Oh, um, so oh, yeah. you know, even though we maybe mostly enjoy dry wines, like keep in mind that there are other other styles of wines that have a place and a time and a, well, a time to enjoy. You know, you know how you spell wine, don't you, Rachel? You just tack an e on the end of win, and we're okay. all. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how I can mess up this four-letter word. Well, <laughs> or I could do the I could do the famous uh, Lauren Bacall line. You know how to whistle, don't you? <laughs> don't Rachel, uh, Rachel's thinking, <laughs> why, why am I going back to work tomorrow? <laughs> I got a whole bunch of them for you, Rachel, when you come in. <laughs> That's the most I was gone. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Okay, so well, you know what they say, Doc. Compromises are for relationships, not for wine. So. Um, we don't like to compromise on quality of wine, but what is it um, that you want out of our white wine program? Mm. Gosh, I, 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 will, I, will, I, I love great varietal uh, uh, intensity, complexity, uh, where whole aspects of the wine, the, the minerality, the, the tannin, the, the, the fruit, they're all sort of on equal footing. Tell me, you, you, you have done this, John and, and uh, Rachel, and it's been that's been a great treat for me. But all, all everything has to be in balance and has to be as strong as we can as we can evoke. Well, you, you know, we, um, you know, Rachel and I have spoken about this um, subject, you know, in, in various shades of what it is the the quality means for us, what what it is we're trying to do, and and we've been very fortunate. I think we both fully appreciate the fact that we have quite a few varietals, uh, unique varietals to deal with it at the winery. It's not just four or five, you know, we, we do bring in, you know, um, I think over 18, 
18 different varietals, I think, or 19, something like that. Might be even 20 by now. But one thing we haven't done, Doc, and I want to know what your opinion is. So are you familiar with the wines of Greece? Only a little bit. I've you know, been, been there once. And, uh, okay, well, I like the wine. Yeah, yeah they, they have a great additive there. And Trish uh, was uh, nice enough to just remind me of that. We should deal with a little bit of Retsina. <laughs> right. <Well. laughs> Opa! <laughs> No, <laughs> it's uh, the red cedar comes from the from the resin and pine resin that was used to to prevent uh, 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 malolactic changes. I, I mean, uh, uh, change to vinegar. Right. And uh, yeah, and so uh, I'd like to leave the pine resin out if possible, John. Uh, well, you uh, know, you a little pine salt with your wine. Uh... <laughs> I appreciate okay. that. Thank you. <laughs> okay, well, uh, <laughs> um, somebody just asked if that's your personal wine collection behind you, Rachel. It is. Yeah. <laughs> it's my, my new handy handy wine rack. It's not new, it's old, but I, it's relatively new to me. <laughs> that, that, is, that is very nice. It, it, uh, unfortunately, where everybody's been seeing you, they thought that was your wine collection, but little <laughs> did know you were just ranking Dr. Becker's wine collection. That was just a lot of trust. <laughs> I put me down there by myself. But exactly. Not. <laughs> Canada. <laughs> well, I um, I have to. I, I kind of want to get to this because I've been thinking about this wine today. So I tried this earlier last week. Uh, I opened it up just to to see how it was going. The fourteen. Um, it was kind of looking forward to this um, broadcast, but food. This is a, uh, I don't think is a difficult wine to pair with food, but I want to get everybody's input. So Doc, what do you think? What would you pair? You know, uh, whenever I, I, I have Muscat, um, I know that the night before the uh, eruption of uh, Mount Vesuvius, uh, Plenty had a, uh, opened a 200 year old amphora of Muscat. And I want to have whatever he had with me. With <laughs> and uh, I'm working, I don't, I don't have the answer yet, but I'm working on it. Could we forego the Vesuvius end of that? <laughs> I think we're right on the edge. But, you know, let's just hope, you know, in 2020, I don't want the super caldera up in Yellowstone going on. That's a lot of <laughs> We've already had murder hornets. We have COVID. We have a Sahara, uh, dust storm. <laughs> and the giant tarantulas that are coming in off the, um, the Sahara dust. Have you read about this? Yeah. It can carry up to a thousand babies. Yeah. You do not want to step on that mama. Mm. <laughs> I'm just waiting for Godzilla to come back and fight Mothra. <laughs> Most of those, Rachel, are going to land in, in Waco, so we'll be okay. But, um, <laughs> okay wow. be fine. So where did you go to school again, Doc? <laughs> no, yeah. Not Waco. Yeah, I know. No rival. Uh, so what, so food, Rachel? Okay. So I'm going to offer two suggestions. Thai food, a spicy Thai, I think would go really, really nicely with this. Yep. And I want peach cobbler or oh, apricot yeah. cobbler. Yeah. yeah. Okay, Doc, any, any additions to the food? You know, I think a, a, a wonderful roast chicken, you know, like you might have in the Loire Valley would be uh, something oh, a nice like herb, herb. Herb. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah normal chicken. Okay. A, a nice cake, maybe. Nice yeah. and, mm -hmm. and juicy. That sounds really. Now I'm getting hungry. Thank you for that suggestion. I, on the other hand, uh, have been missing a little bit of low country cooking. So I'm going to go with uh, shrimp and grits for this wine. Uh -huh. uh, yeah. I think it would do a nice little spicy shrimp and grits would do very, very well with this. Then we cook. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I'm thinking that might be just lovely as I'll get out. Uh, somebody suggested Mexican food, which would be very nice. I think with this wine, Honestly, anything with mild, mild to moderate spice in it would probably be really good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oysters on the half shell would be excellent. So I, I love the fact that people are not asking questions, but they are, they are just blown up with food suggestions here. Um, and uh, somebody just made a peach blueberry pie, which thank you for sharing that. Now I'm definitely hungry. <laughs> well, um, you know, the, it's, it, is a, it is a vin ordinaire for us. It's a, to me, it's an everyday wine. But I want to also get into the rest of this week. Um, we've got some really nice wines coming up on Wednesday. Um, I believe if I've got the order correct, I believe it's the um, Main Street cab. We, we make just for the Main Street tasting room, uh, which is a, a, a beautiful Texas Cabernet. 
It's different than the other cabs. We, we did a, a really nice job with a, a, a more Bordeaux-esque blend instead of New World style. And then on Friday, we've got the, the um, Primavera Merlot. Uh, Bar I think it's the, is it the Barbera Merlot, Rachel? I, um, that we're doing, I, I think it's, I think it's the Merlot. Is that next week? Yeah. So, this no, it is the Barbera Merlot. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. So, Oh, I'm sorry. No, it's not. That's next week. Whoops. I just totally confused everybody. <laughs> so, you know, it is the Primavera Merlot. So next week, um, yeah, next week we've got the Barbera Merlot on Monday, the Estate Merlot, our 2012 Estate Merlot, which I'm, I am really looking forward to that. And then the uh, Friday will be the Wilmoth Cab. And all of these are 2012 vintage. So next week is all the 2012 library vintages. So it'll be really nice to see straight across the board a, a overview of that that vineyard or that vintage on there. So I uh, I am absolutely enamored with this wine for for what it is. Uh, I hope everybody has been enjoying it. Any final words, uh, Doc, on on the wine, the wine tasting? Any other notes that you want to give anybody? I would say the the apricot in this is really really standing out, and um, maybe some also some cinnamon. You know, kind of, kind of what you expect from uh, Muscat Tonelli. Yeah. And uh, and then sort of, a, sort of an earthiness, apple, you know, and, and that thing is just fabulous. Um, I think it'd be great. It'd be great to have this at, at supper with uh, mm -hmm. with some you know, of the there's things. A little, there. little bit of that amyl acetate in there from the age, which is really uh -huh. nice. Not an awful yeah. lot, but just a tiny bit. So, Rachel, yeah. any final words on it? Well, I think this is quite lovely, and I think it's a lot of fun. You know, we. We have a handful, a selection of white wines that we produce, and this one's a little outside of our box. And um, I think it's a good addition to everything else we have. Hmm, yeah. So, you know, Ernest Hemingway used to say that he drank to make other people more interesting. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, just, <laughs> just throwing out another quote. I'm not saying anything. <laughs> I'm <laughs> sorry. He needed a new set of friends. Yeah. <laughs> well, he, he, uh, Papa Hemingway was definitely an interesting character all to himself. So, well, everybody, I, uh, I think we've got, um, we've just got a lot of really good compliments coming through here. I'm glad everybody's been enjoying this. But I'd like to uh, toast everyone uh, for the week. Uh, and I, I would like to remind people that please, please, please be careful, stay healthy. Um, I understand there's uh, a lot of concerns going on in the world, but always remember, take a few minutes for yourself every day to unwind and, and have some, some downtime. I think it's important. So, and hopefully you'll enjoy a glass of wine with that downtime and be able to relax. Other than that, I'd like to wish everybody great health, good wine, and we'll see you all on Wednesday for another wonderful edition. Thank you, John. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you, Rachel. Yeah. Cheers. <laughs>